Welcome to Thai Law Forum. I'm joined today by Armel Lebion. Uh, Armel is a green building consultant and engineer based here in Bangkok. Uh, she's on a mission to help create uh, more sustainable buildings here in Asia and she's starting in Thailand. So Armel, thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. Um, firstly, can you just give me more of a, an overview about what exactly it is that you do? Okay, so I'm a green building consultant and engineer and I'm the founder of the green building division at Technisoft and we help designers, architects, and building owners to actually um, achieve high performance buildings. So buildings uh, that have high level of comfort while minimizing the energy and the impact on the planet. So we uh, provide green consulting uh, design and also technical analysis to actually uh, help to integrate technologies and techniques to uh, make sure that we use less energy, less water, and uh, more comfortable environment. Okay, so why did you choose Thailand to start with? Well, actually, I followed my partner who got a job opportunity here. Oh. And uh, so then I decided to make it an opportunity for myself too. And uh, the green building sector here is quite young. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's challenging and it's booming. So I was quite excited to be part of this uh, new movement. Okay, so you say it's quite young. Why do you think it's so incredibly important in Thailand especially? Well. Um, first of all, the context of, of buildings, so uh, studies have shown that buildings consume approximately 40% of the total energy use, 12% uh, of the total potable water that is potable, and they emit more than 30% of greenhouse gas emissions, and they generate 30% of all the wastes. <laughs> so, <laughs> a, lot. Yeah. a lot. So addressing uh, buildings is basically mm -hmm. addressing climate change. Okay. And um, green building offers uh, possibilities actually to interconnect ideas that are not connected usually. Um, you bring all the people together. It's a multidisciplinary field, so this is what I find exciting about it is that you all sit all together. So different designers from different disciplines, but also uh, the building owners and the users. Mm -hmm. And you find better ideas than you would have found yourself alone in your specialty. So it actually stands on the fact that uh, the, the the whole is greater than the sum of parts okay. and it brings really interesting results because it reduces drastically the energy use, the water use, the waste generation and the greenhouse gas emissions. And is it, are you you're using nature, you're sort of trying to have nature on your side while you're building? Yes, the yeah. Uh, so we favor passive design which is also cl called climatic responsive design. So basically we take into account the context, so the climate, so yes. the sun, the wind, uh, the water, mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we take as much opportunities mm -hmm. from these natural sources. So for, if we look at the sun, we take opportunities to increase uh, daylight, for instance, by putting mm -hmm. windows on the right side, but also we protect from the solar heat gain because it's I mean, a tropical country, you want to protect yourself from the heat that you get from the mm -hmm. sun. Yes. And at the same time, you try to use, for instance, the sun's energy. So it could be solar panels, for instance, mm -hmm. on the building or an array somewhere near the building. How do you, I don't know if this is going to be <laughs> difficult asking you a technical question, but how do you um, keep things cool while also having the buildings there to attract the most light, like you just said? So <laughs> there's different ways of doing this. Um, the first thing is uh, to uh, be careful about the orientation. So having the right orientation means that, for instance, in, in Thailand, you get the most heat from the roof and from the west facade. So uh, you're not going to want to put, um, you're going to have a lot of light, but you don't want to put huge glazing, for instance, on the west facade. So you're going to try to put them where the sun don't, doesn't directly enter. And the way to have light without heat is actually to reflect the rays okay. so that they don't arrive directly on you. And also to protect, for instance, with shading devices. So you're going to have like overhangs or um, the kind of like, shutters type, okay. or you also have like high performance glazing so you can have double panel or triple panel and you can have also some coatings mm. that are gonna like let light in without letting the heat in. Which so sounds far, far more clever than I'm sure I can grasp. Um, so in terms of Asia as a whole, where does Thailand stand? Is it is it lagging behind in terms of greenness? Um, no, it, it's, it's not lagging behind. A actually, um, Asia uh, is making great efforts in terms of green buildings and sustainability as a whole, but there is a lot of disparities between the countries. Mm -hmm. If you look at Singapore, it's considered as a green model. At the same time, you have Indonesia, who's burning trees and suffocating in haze. So, 
In Thailand, the number of green buildings, uh, certified green buildings, have uh, more than doubled annually since 2007, so it's really promising. We're on the good track, but there's still a lot of things to do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I, I believe we can, we can reach uh, <laughs> goals in terms of green buildings here too. Great, and um, well, I mean, you just mentioned Jakarta, but I mean, what are the, the most worrying aspects of climate change in, in Asia that you've seen? Well, we've seen a growing number of disasters uh, in the past decade, just to name a few. So there's uh, yeah, the, the haze in, uh, in Indonesia. You have Philippines that is hit very severely every year by typhoons. Um, you have, for instance, uh, Beijing and New Delhi that are suffocating, uh, so becoming unbreathable cities. And Thailand had its fair share too, uh, 2004 uh, tsunami and 2011 floods. But that's just to name the big ones, and that's the trick with climate change, is except from some direct uh, cost to affect uh, problems, such as peak of pollution in cities that are having unsustainable ways of transportation, manufacturing and building, etc., most of the local consequences are actually due to causes outside of their locality. So that's a problem. Climate change is, is a shared issue. It, it's a global issue. And pollution is one thing, and you're going to see peaks in areas and in cities that do emit more greenhouse uh, gases, right? But at the same time, if you couple this with rise of temperature or rise of sea levels, um, they actually spread outside of the pollution epicenter. And the problem is that uh, those uh, who are paying and who will be paying the highest price are usually those uh, that have least uh, participated and benefited in the use of fossil fuels. So that's just something that we have to address. I mean, um, climate change uh, is also about social security, communities, and people. Okay. Um, how about, uh, well, I'm not sure if this is something you've thought about particularly, but say 50 years down the line, if we do, you know, <laughs> we carry on just being very unsustainable as we are, you know, what will the world look like? And then can you compare it to if we start building green buildings and start doing all the right things? I mean, is this something that you've predicted? Um, myself, no. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of people that have actually done studies and predicted, uh, kind of predicted that kind of stuff. But the problem is we have, we don't know really for sure, right? Um, what we know is that we are seeing uh, a rise in temperature today. We have, so, I don't know if you're, um, you know, this, the COP21 conferences in Paris that are being held right mm -hmm. now on yeah, climate yeah. change, right? And they're trying to limit the uh, temperature increase by two degrees Celsius. Um, today, we have, uh, the two degrees Celsius is compared to the 1990 levels, which is the uh, industrialization era. So we're considering this as a benchmark. And today, we have a temperature increase, for instance, of 0 0.85. But if you don't do anything, it's going to go over four. So that's one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. They predicted also that if we don't do anything by 2100, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, the sea level that is going to increase by one meter. And there's actually 400 million people uh, that live below that level. So that means 400 million people that have a direct threat uh, of this. We've seen also ocean acidification, and the problem is we don't really know how the species are going to actually um, cope with that. Mm -hmm. And we also know that if we don't do anything, we're going to lose 30% of the biodiversity. So that's if we don't do anything. But the good thing is there's actually a lot of people out there that are uh, truly committed and very concerned about the environment and are trying to make a significant change. So for, from, from my point of view, I believe that something will be done and we'll have a better and greener future. And addressing building is part of the problem because, as we said, it's they do emit, they do have a negative impact on the environment, but we can design them better. Actually, if you look back 100 years ago, the way buildings were designed, they were better designed than they're designed today. Yeah. So it's also looking at our past mistakes and taking some examples of what used to work and mm. putting them back. Yeah. Are there any, I mean, if people want to, to help and start making a difference, are there any little things that people can start doing in their own homes? Or is it only really people like you that you know, doing things on a grand scale that will actually make a difference realistically? Uh, no, of course, uh, there's uh, some, um, some stuff, of course, that people can do uh, in their homes. Well, first things first, you can turn off the lights when you're not using them, right? You can unplug appliances, mm -hmm. um, shut down the monitor of a computer when you're not using it, um, but also avoid water running from the tap when you're brushing your teeth. 
Yeah. Um, so that's some small stuff. Uh, another thing is maybe not putting the air conditioning too low. I mean, we're in tropical countries, so if you have to wear, wear a sweater, there's a problem. <laughs> it's like too cold. It's something that's actually very common mm. in, in Bangkok when you go in an office or you go in a shopping mall, you, you just have to wear a sweater. Right? Yeah, in the cinema. Yeah, the it's cinema. so cold, I have to take like two, two jumpers yeah. when I go to the cinema. Exactly. So yeah. that's one thing. And the other thing is not just about buildings, it's also about your attitude as a consumer. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that always strikes me here is uh, this kind of ambiguity on environmental issues. Mm -hmm. On one side, you have a lot of people that are really concerned in creating uh, awareness programs, education programs, cleaning programs, so cleaning beaches, planting trees, going organic on, on uh, food production. And at the same time, um, well, every time you want to buy, for instance, a bottle of water, they're going to put it in a small plastic bag and give you a straw in a small plastic packaging. They really do that here. They yeah, like right. to use a lot of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm. And you're the one who has to say no because they're the one proposing it to you. So that's something you can do. If you, for a chewing gum pack or something like that, you don't need it, just say, just say no, I don't want it. You can also bring reusable grocery bags, for instance. Mm. That's I, do, I do that, you know, and they yeah. give me the strangest looks, like, put it in here, and they're like, really? No. But they actually yeah. feel happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, some, even some shops are now uh, putting some days, like for instance the 15th and 30th of every month, mm -hmm. where it's called No Plastic Bag Day. So it's a very good thing, but you have to not hand in plastic bags on these days, and it's still mm -hmm. at the beginning. But people are going towards this. Mm -hmm. So that's on an individual do you, level. Do you think yeah. they should start charging for plastic bags? Like they have in the UK, I don't yeah. know. Do they in France? Yeah, in France too, they have that. Uh, they, you can charge for the plastic bag and sometimes they also, but they also already propose you to buy some reusable bags. Mm. It's just that people don't, don't do it because it's, it's not in, in the way. You know, it took a lot of time in, in the UK and in France to actually get to that level. And so we're starting here. I mean, we have to let get people have a chance to do it and time to do it, but uh, the more we talk about it, the more we actually can change something. So. And um, what about other sustainability projects in, in Thailand or Asia that you've heard of? Is there anything especially interesting that you've heard of? Um, there's one project I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's called the Super Tower. It's going to be the uh, biggest and t well, the tallest building in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. And it's... Um, supposed to be uh, LEED certified at platinum level. So LEED is a green building certification that comes from the US. And so basically it looks at um, water reduction, energy reduction, the quality of air, quality of comfort, and platinum is the highest level you can achieve. So I'm quite looking forward to this project, which should be completed in 2018 or 19, and to see what has been done, uh, and uh, if we're on a successful path for the tallest, greenest building uh, in the region. Sounds quite exciting. But I believe there will be more also if, um, because we spoke about the, the individual right uh, things that we can do to actually uh, help uh, to mitigate you know, climate change. But on a country level, um, it's important also that the government actually promotes and supports more sustainable practices uh, to have more of these kind of projects. And by providing, for instance, incentives, tax rebates, funding and creating an educational program to, to increase environmental awareness and mm -hmm. and help businesses and people to actually achieve affordable green solutions. That's one thing. The other thing is also, I believe on business level, on a private level, uh, companies have to engage in sustainable practices and more so in sustainable projects. There's too few. And I think it's our responsibility as business owners, as engineers, as consultants mm -hmm. in the design and construction field to actually show and lead the way in implementing the best practices uh, in terms of environment. And the thing is, it, it's a good way for everyone because as you do so, you're going to actually shift the market and you're going to have more and more green skills that are going to be developed and you have more and more green products that are going to be available, uh, which is actually going to make it easier and cheaper for our industry and for anyone to actually achieve high performance targets and, and develop green projects. So I'm looking forward to this too. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, you mentioned just a second ago, um, about, you know, half the battle is just letting people know more about this yeah. in the education side. Is there much going on in schools in Thailand? Um, not that I'm aware of, but then again, I'm not really in the uh, educational uh, yeah. <laughs> business here. No, I just wondered if you, if you knew. But um, I've seen some seminars and some conferences, and also I've seen some, some actions like bringing children to like a planetary in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. 
so or to help us a uh, poor community. So I'm I'm thinking that people are doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I'll I'll let you go in a minute. I just was going to ask one last question. Is there I don't know if people want to learn more either about you or about sustainability in Asia in general? Where where can they go? Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to learn more about me, you can visit the, my website, uh, which is uh, green uh, alb uh, dot woods dot com. Green alb dot woods dot com. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll link to it yeah, under the video. <laughs> and if you want to learn more, uh, I suggest uh, the Asia Green Building Platform, which is a platform about green buildings in Asia. And so uh, they uh, feature a lot of projects, but also a lot of solution, and also interviewing with people that are giving solutions, and then we're talking, we're explaining just what it is and how we can make a change. So, Great. Great. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, now thank you so much. Well, thank you.